All right, good afternoon. Take your time. <laughs> Take your time. I just, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How are you, Sue? You good? Can we get you anything? <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Maybe I can get you some answers. Yeah. No, that's all right. That's all right. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> Uh, the Security Council uh, just held a meeting, an open meeting on the situation in Afghanistan. Briefing was Rosa Otunbayeva, as you know, the Secretary General Special Representative in Afghanistan and head of the political mission there. She noted the lack of progress in resolving human rights issues as is a key factor behind the current impasse and emphasized that accepting and working to uphold international norms and standards as set out in UN treaties that Afghanistan has ratified will continue to be a non-negotiable condition for a seat at the United Nations. Also briefing council members was OCHA's Director of Coordination, Ramesh Raja Singham. Uh, he warned that as we come to the end of 2023, humanitarian needs continue to push record levels with more than 29 million people requiring humanitarian assistance, one million more than in January, and 340% increase over the last five years. He stressed that the Afghan people need sustainable solutions and a longer term approach that moves them beyond mere survival. Solutions that allow support for income generation, agricultural climate resilience, and restoration of basic services. Turning to Gaza, the World Food Program reports that a 46 truck convoy organized jointly with the Jordanian Hashemite Charity Organization on Wednesday, that is today, carried more than 750 metric tons of life-saving food into Gaza, marking the first time a direct aid convoy from Jordan has reached the Gaza Strip since October 7th. Sadly, after 10 weeks of the crisis in Gaza, the World Food Program fears that half of the population is now starving, but it is hopeful that this crucial first step should pave the way for a more sustainable aid corridor through Jordan and allow for the delivery of more aid at scale. On the ground, heavy Israeli bombardments from the air, land, and sea across Gaza, as well as firing of rockets by Palestinian armed groups into Israel, continued for the 75th day. Reports of attacks on health facilities, as well as UN facilities, which are considered protected places under, inter protected places under international humanitarian law, have also continued. The Office for the Coordination of Humanitarian Affairs tells us that for the seventh day in a row, most areas of the Gaza Strip have had no telecommunications or internet services, severely affecting, um, affecting emergency operations and access to information. In the southern area, as mentioned yesterday, services have been temporarily restored. They also tell us that the Rafa governorate has become the most densely populated area within Gaza, with hundreds of thousands of displaced people squeezed into extremely overcrowded spaces and in dire living conditions. The population density is now assessed to exceed 12,000 people per square kilometers, a fourfold, fourfold increase since the start of the operations. The suffering of displaced people is compounded by the cold winter and rains that flooded tents and other makeshift shelters over the past week. Uh, for its part, UNICEF says the children, uh, the impact on children is particularly dramatic because they are more susceptible to dehydration, diarrhea, disease, and malnutrition. They're also concerned about various waterborne uh, diseases. Um, UNICEF, with its partners, is continuing to help and is providing to fuel is providing fuel to operate wells, desalination plants, and water trucking and waste sewage management, blood, uh, bottled water, and water containers benefiting over 1.3 million people with safe drinking water since uh, the beginning of this round of the crisis. Uh, the current hostilities have also have had a staggering impact on the economy. According to estimates released by the International Labor Organization and the Palestinian Central Bureau of Statistics, at least 66% of employment has been lost in Gaza since 7 October. That's about 192,000 jobs. 
this morning, the Secretary General spoke uh, at the General Assembly meeting to pay tribute to the late Emir of Kuwait, Sheikh Nawaf al Hamad al Jabr al Sabah. The Emir was a determined champion of preventive diplomacy, Mr. Guterres said, an approach that helped define Kuwait's role across the Gulf region and around the world. He extended his best wishes to uh, the new Emir, Emir Sheikh Michal al uh, Ahmad al Jabr al Sabah, who is taken over the leadership of Kuwait and reiterated our strong partnership and friendship with that country. Uh, after uh, turning to Yemen and after he concluded his meetings in Riyadh, our um, special envoy for Yemen, Hans Grunberg, has now moved on to Muscat in Oman, where he met with Mohammed Abdullah Salam, Ansar Allah's chief negotiator. The discussions focused on the ongoing efforts to foster progress uh, towards measured, uh, implementing measures to improve living conditions in Yemen, securing a sustainable nationwide ceasefire, and achieving tangible progress towards an inclusive political process under UN auspices. He also met with senior Omani officials to whom Mr. Grumberg expressed his gratitude for Oman's strong support uh, to uh, our mediation efforts in Yemen. And uh, just to give you further update on the situation in uh, Sudan, in Al Jazeera state, Today, our World Food Program colleagues announced that they are temporarily suspending food assistance in some parts of Al Jazeera state as fighting is spread south and east of the capital Khartoum. Just a few days ago, a humanitarian coordination colleagues said all humanitarian field work within the state had been suspended until further notice due to the security situation. WFP said this is a major setback to humanitarian efforts in the country's breadbasket, where WFP has been regularly providing aid to cover 800,000 people, including many who had escaped the fighting in Khartoum. Needless to say that the ongoing fighting makes it extremely challenging for humanitarian agencies to safely deliver assistance, especially with more and more people on the move fleeing for their lives. We reiterate our call on both the Sudanese armed forces and the rapid support forces to immediately cease fighting and to commit to a durable cessation of hostilities. Um, as, general as general elections are taking place in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the head of our peacekeeping mission there, Bintu Keita, reiterated the UN's um, call for a peaceful and inclusive electoral process. She urged the Congolese population and political actors to calmly exercise their civic duty and to strictly follow the laws of the country. Ms. Keita also called on political parties and their candidates to maintain calm while waiting for results to be posted by the Independent Electoral Commission and appealed to them and the general population to avoid unnecessary gatherings around polling stations to prevent the risk of confrontation. She commended the National Electoral Observation Missions and their efforts to ensure credible process and reiterated the Secretary General's ongoing support for the Congolese people in their pursuit of peace, democracy, and stability. Earlier today, Jean-Pierre Lacroix, the head of our peacekeeping operations department, arrived in Bangui, the capital of the Central African Republic, to begin a three-day mission, which we mentioned to you uh, yesterday. Uh, speaking to media on arrival, he called for the, the visit, uh, he called his visit a visit of solidarity and support for set with Central Africans. As um, we told you, Mr. Lacroix scheduled meet with uh, national authorities, civil society, peacekeepers, uh, and others, and he will also travel to Birao. At an event taking place earlier today in Bangui, the head of our peacekeeping mission there, Valentin Rug uh, Wabiza, reiterated the commitment of the United Nations to continue its partnership with the Special Criminal Court in that country. As such, the mission has continued its financial support to the court's activities with nearly $5 million until the end of 2024, a commitment welcomed by the event, uh, in, excuse me, welcomed at the event by the Central African authorities. The Special Criminal Court was set up in 2015 to investigate and prosecute serious international crimes committed since 2003. And moving back north to Europe, the humanitarian coordinator in Ukraine, Denise Brown, condemned today's wave of attacks that damaged or destroyed the warehouses of at least three humanitarian organizations in Kherson, in the south of the country. Um, our humanitarian colleagues tell us that warehouses of two organizations were burned to the ground, destroying much needed relief supplies, while the facilities of other NGOs were damaged. 
Uh, other damages uh, were recorded and some civilians were injured. Ms. Brown stressed that strikes continue to impact our uh, humanitarian's ability to carry out life-saving work and prevent humanitarian, it prevents humanitarian aid from reaching the civilians who most need it. Despite the ongoing attacks, uh, humanitarians are continuing to provide vital assistance to, to people in Kherson, where pressing needs are compounded by the cold winter conditions. Today, the second interagency convoy in less than a week reached the region with winter supplies, including medicines, food blankets, solar lamps, construction materials for home repairs, and kits for people with disabilities. In 2023, in this past year, we, along with our partners, have organized 26 humanitarian convoys to the Kherson region alone, delivering critical supplies to about 60,000 people. And a uh, senior personnel announcement to share with you. Uh, the Secretary General of the United Nations, together with the Executive Director of the World Food Program, Cindy McCain, and the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization, Ku Dong Yu, are <coughs> appointing Rania Dagash Kamara of Sudan as WFP's Assistant Executive Director for Partnerships and Resource Mobilization. She succeeds Ut Klamert of Germany, to whom the Secretary General is grateful for her dedicated service to the organization. Ms. Dagash Kamara brings over 25 years of international and field experience in humanitarian affairs, development um, affairs, and political affairs. Since 2021, she has been UNICEF's Deputy Regional Director in Eastern and Southern Africa. We congratulate her. And speaking of congratulations, today is the International Human Solidarity Day. It is, it is not a day to sigh, it is a day to celebrate our unity and diversity and to raise public awareness of the importance of solidarity. Benno, will you be stand in solidarity with me? Uh, I'm, I might, but also have a question which touches that subject. I mean, like, I think you answered, it's about the Security Council today. I think you might have answered that in the last days, but today is a new day and today the Security Council is again supposed to vote on a resolution uh, ramping up aid. Uh, it looks like it could be vetoed. Um, what's at stake here? What's your message to well, the I mean, the, the, the 15 are meeting in Conclave. Uh, they're continuing their discussions. We'll see what comes out of the discussions, uh, not for us to, to interfere with those discussions, which I understand are, are fairly uh, intense. Um, the Secretary General's own position is unchanged. He's been calling for a humanitarian ceasefire, to, and also he's been calling for the creation of, um, of the conditions on the ground to be conducive uh, for broader delivery of humanitarian aid. Deji. Today, according to local authority, um, after 75 days into the conflict, Gaza's death toll reached 20,000. Does the Secretary General have anything to say about this sheer number of well, casualties? The, the number has been unacceptable and huge and sheer, and whatever uh, adjective you want to use, for, for quite some time. Um, again, we want to see a humanitarian ceasefire. We want to see the guns fall silent uh, so we can reach the people of Gaza who need, who need the most help right now. And also, as uh, Mr. Venislan has said, as the SG has said, about reestablishing a political path to a two-state solution. Uh, let me ask you a more detailed uh, question. On Karim <coughs> Asalam uh, border crossing, do you have more details now on, on how many, the numbers of truck passed uh, Karim Asalam? Yes, so Asalam? Uh, we mentioned uh, the... Um, uh, I mentioned to you what went through with WFP uh, today. I can tell you that uh, 64 trucks entered uh, on the 18th through that crossing, and um, another 60, uh, sorry, 64 on the 18th and 60 uh, today. And let me try again because I. Okay. Let's rewind. All right. And let me restart. Uh, on the 18th of December, 64 trucks through uh, Karim Shalom, Karim Asalam. 60 trucks uh, entered Gaza through Rafah. 
Uh, on the 19th of December, uh, 104 trucks through Rafa and 60 through the other. So why why it's smaller? The number is smaller than a Rafa, because you you just said it's a it's a commercial border crossing. So it's supposed to have more trucks. It, we're, it, listen, it, it kind of it depends on the day, it depends on where the trucks are. Um, so, okay. Oh, one last question. Is the SG going to have a year-end presser or not? Uh, it will very likely, and I'm putting my neck out in front of you, that you will see him uh, at the stakeout on Friday, uh, say some words to you, and take some questions. So there's no press conference? Not, a, a, not a full-blown uh, press conference, uh, but an I, interaction. May I know why? It's a scheduling issue. <laughs> okay. okay. Senor. Uh, thank you, Steph. Uh, the governments of uh, the United States and Venezuela uh, landed on an agreement uh, to swap prisoners, and uh, that is a process that is uh, taking, uh, it's underway right now. Uh, uh, in this context, uh, did the UN take part in this process at all in any capacity? No, I'm not aware that we were involved in this uh, process. We're obviously uh, following this event uh, very closely, and the Secretary General trusts that uh, all the parties involved will use this to build uh, confidence and address uh, human rights concerns. Just a quick follow-up. So this agreement is allowing six Americans to come back home. Um, and regardless of this important step, uh, there are still more than 100 uh, uh, people that are still political prisoners inside of Venezuelan jail. So could you remind us, in principle, the view of the SG on the situation of political prisoners? Uh, you know, uh, people should not uh, be jailed for uh, political activity, for what they're saying, what they're thinking, what they're advocating for. Mr. Bulkati, then Dennis. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, today, the um, spokeswoman for the Russian Foreign Ministry, Maria Zakharova, yes. said that um, five days ago, uh, Moscow uh, handed over to the ESG the information regarding the uh, Kiev regime crimes against the civilian population since 2014 till 2023. And they're waiting for the reaction from the SG. Have you received this information? Uh, I will check. Uh, I, I will check if the letter has been received and what the status of the response is. Thank you, Dennis. Uh, lately, you told that uh, WHO managed to go to the northern parts of Gaza. Mm -hmm. uh, does the UN and its partners uh, plan any other uh, attempts to yeah, I mean, approach humanitarian aid to northern Gaza? We we are trying, <laughs> uh, but we're unable. Uh, we've unable to distribute humanitarian aid in, in the northern part of Gaza on, on our own. Uh, and I have no doubt that our WHO colleagues are trying to reach, uh, go back to the hospital as soon as they can. Mike. Um, with regards to uh, Security Council resolution, um, I already forgot the number, the only one that's actually gotten through on the Israel-Hamas conflict uh, the Secretary General sent a letter a couple of days ago to the President of the Security Council laying out some potential mm -hmm. options to try to ramp up humanitarian aid. Has there been any initial reaction from the Council, and does the Secretary General have a preference within those options as to what he'd like to see? No, the options are, he, he laid out the, the options. We're waiting to hear back from the Council as how they would move ahead. But I think the, 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 the options also required... Uh, some specific action from, from the Security Council. Dawn. Thanks, Steph. I wanted to follow up on the invitation from the Israeli government to Pramila Patton, um, whether or not she's, I know she welcomed it, but whether or not she's responded, is there any formal trip planned for? I, I, I haven't been informed. It doesn't mean you can't contact her, her office. Uh, I, I, I haven't been briefed in the last week or so uh, on, on her, on that invitation, but we can check. Okay, <clears throat> excuse me. And then I have a question about um, Ambassador Erdogan of Israel posted on his Twitter that the Secretary General was given a viewing of the IDF's film of Hamas atrocities um, 16 hours ago, I don't know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> that makes a difference um, from October 7th. The Secretary General, at least how Erdogan wrote it in the tweet was that, or the X, was that it shows humanity at its worst. Um, can you give any more detail about no, what I mean, he that, that specifically was the, saw? That was the Secretary General's reaction. Uh, I mean, he was shown horrific uh, footage, uh, and that was his, his reaction. Um, 
but I, I would also remind you that he had uh, condemned uh, these horrific acts of terror by Hamas way before having uh, seen, seen the video. Um, just to follow up, Erdogan also said in his, in his tweet that he, he's waiting to see now if, if the Secretary General's language changes. I, I think, that, you... listen, uh, again, not interested in, in entering into a polemic uh, with the ambassador, uh, but I think the Secretary General's language has been very direct, very clear, using very simple and very understandable words. Stefano. Thank you, Stefan. A quick follow-up on this. Um, the, the United States government has been asking also about this uh, last resolution that, that um, the condemnation of Hamas will be included in the resolution. So uh, does the Secretary General have any uh, advice on that? Do, does he agree or he thinks he's... Uh, I mean, Stefano, um, you've been here quite a long time, uh, as I have. Uh, the Security Council, uh, in its wisdom, will decide on its way forward and what words to include, what words not to include. That's their affair. Uh, and, the and Secretary General has been, has been clear in his own uh, language. And then on the deal that the European Union just uh, had on the migration uh, issue, um, Filippo Grandi welcomed the, the deal. Uh, does the Secretary General want to add anything or what Grandi? I mean, it, the Secretary General, uh, I think, agrees uh, with the position of the High Commissioner for Refugees who speaks on those issues for us. Uh, Benno, and then we'll go back to Dennis. Thank you. I have another follow up to the um, uh, Gaza resolution. And, um, one of the uh, big disagreements right now seems to be if the United Nations is trustworthy to monitor uh, flowing aid into Gaza. Is the UN trustworthy? Well, I will not have us inserted into uh, the discussions that are going on uh, right now. Uh, in the council, because we know how delicate uh, they are. So it is as much as you'd like to uh, to draw us into it. What I can tell you is that all over the world, the UN does its humanitarian work based on on, on principles of of impartiality, and that happens in every corner of the world, and we will continue to do it in that manner. Dennis. You try Just to, drag to me into follow it up on uh, Northern Gaza, mm -hmm. so uh, what are the main impediments to uh, get the aid here? Uh, and did the UN try to get any uh, security guarantees from Israeli government? That, I mean, the, the impediment, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off, sorry. Uh, the, the impediment is that there continues to be a conflict going on, right? Uh, the only way we can go into those areas, as we go in any area where there is conflict and we operate all over the world, is by uh, having security guarantees and going through a humanitarian deconfliction process where we advise all the parties involved in the conflict, this is what we're doing, this is where we're going, this is the number of vehicles that we will have, this is what they look like. So we, need, we're, we're not, we do not send convoys into the heat of battle without having what we feel are the necessary uh, deconfliction mechanism in place and agreed to. So we, will con we are continuing to engage on that. And uh, like you are talking to the Israeli... We, we, we talk to everyone who is involved in this conflict to ensure the safety of our people. Madame. Is that me? That, w that would be you. Okay. Uh, Mademoiselle is okay, too. Uh, the uh, possibility of uh, Guterres naming a special envoy for Afghanistan, what, what is that likelihood? Uh, 
I, I don't have anything to share with you on that at this point. But is he mulling it over, or uh, is it really up to the Security Council to say to him, "Go ahead and do well, this"? Well, we would we would want to see uh, some agreement uh, from the from the council, but I have nothing at this point. Okay, uh, thank you all. No Monica today, I believe. Hasta la vista.